Welcome to our introduction to Windows XP. In this video, we'll show you how to use the Start menu. In this video, I'm going to talk you through the Windows XP Start menu. The Start menu is always accessible through the Start button on the taskbar. So even if you have your taskbar at the top of the screen, like this, for example, click, hold, and drag it to the top of the screen, as you saw in the previous video, the Start button is still there. It can be accessed at any time just by clicking it. Okay, let me move the taskbar down to the bottom, where it generally is, and now I'll take you through this. For accessing the Start menu, just click the button, just once with the left mouse button, and it brings it up. Now, the Start menu is really where you access most of the things you would need. For example, if you want to log off or turn off your computer, you can do so here. And here are a number of options, as you can see. You can access My Documents immediately, or My Pictures, My Music, My Computer, and Control Panel, which is quite an advanced feature. And even more advanced is Set Program Access and Defaults. And usefully, you can get help and support, you can search for files, and so on. Okay, all programs. Here at the left, you have access to all the programs you have installed on your computer. So you just click it, or in fact, you don't even have to click it, you just hold your mouse over it, and it appears. It brings up a detailed submenu. Every item that comes up in the submenu is either a category or a piece of software you've installed. For example, the category Accessories comes by default with Windows. It contains things such as other subcategories, as you can see. Communications is a subcategory, or perhaps you could say a submenu of accessories. So this is a list of communications accessories that come included with Windows XP. There's even an Entertainment submenu with a few options there. and system tools, and so on. So basically, if you want to access any piece of installed software, and note that I'm not clicking anything here, I'm just literally moving my mouse around, and if you hold your mouse over any of these, it brings up a submenu. So for example, with Microsoft Office Tools, I'm just holding the mouse there, and it brings up all the options available in the category, in the menu item, Microsoft Office Tools, such as Microsoft Access, Snapshot Viewer, Microsoft Binder, and so on. If we go to Mozilla Firefox, hold the mouse there, and I get Mozilla Firefox and Mozilla Firefox Safe Mode. So let's say I want to open up Mozilla Firefox. Just click once with your left mouse button. Let's close that and go back to the Start menu. and back to All Programs. And just holding the mouse there, and again it just pops up. Here I have some shortcuts included as part of the Start menu. Some of these shortcuts are considered so important that they aren't even in a submenu. For example, Internet Explorer isn't in a submenu. You just click it, and Internet Explorer appears. That said, just as a side note, let's go back again to the Start button, left click, all programs, left click, and with these shortcuts you can see that many of them are Microsoft shortcuts. Access, Excel, Outlook, PowerPoint, and so on. Microsoft considers these shortcuts particularly important, as you can imagine they would because it's their software. So they've made them very easily accessible. But if you want to tuck them away into a certain subfolder, or if you want to take a certain item out of a subfolder, you can do that, which we'll cover in a later video. But at this point, it's worth noting that this is all very, very customizable. However, if you're happy with the default, then you can just work with it that way, as it appears before you here. So, that's how you navigate through all programs. You see that you don't need to click on any of these, just drag your mouse where you want it to go, and when you hold the mouse over the item, the submenu appears, 
And if you take your mouse away from the menu, it doesn't disappear. But if you just click once with the left mouse button away from the menu on the desktop, the menu disappears. We need to bring that back. So left click, all programs, and the last example. If I want to bring up Microsoft Word, I just left click once on the shortcut here and it will appear. And Microsoft Word immediately opens up. Let's close that. So in a way, the Start menu allows you to access all the software on your computer in one easy place. So that's the All Programs area. And interestingly, you see, shortcuts are now appearing here in what was a blank area of the Start menu a few minutes ago. It adds shortcuts here for the software you access. I've accessed Firefox, Explorer, and Word, so it's created shortcuts here. Essentially, it's trying to guess what's important to me. So next time I want to open Word, I don't need to go through the All Programs again. I can just, and let's click on the Start menu again so we get rid of all programs. Left click once, and once more, and there are the shortcuts. So if I wanted to, I could open up Word here. Left click, and there it is. Okay, let's close that. Back to the Start menu. So that's all programs, and these are the shortcuts to the programs I open frequently. Then my documents, my pictures, my music. These are just shortcuts to folders on your computer. I won't go into too much detail on folders now, but you can think of a folder as a storage area, a specific storage area. And in a way, it's the same concept as a folder in a filing cabinet, for example. Let's say that in a filing cabinet, you had a folder that you called My Documents, and you put all your documents there. It's the same concept in Windows XP. You have a folder called My Documents, and within it are all your documents. Again, it's all very customizable, and you don't have to keep your documents in the My Documents folder, but it does make it easy, and you may be quite happy to use this default area to store your documents. So if we left click it once, and it opens up. I'm not going to go into folders too much at this point, navigating files and folders, but it will be coming later. As you can see, in My Documents, there is some content here by default. And as you can see, some software automatically adds folders or subfolders. For example, I had Skype installed, so it's added a folder, My Skype Content, and one called My Skype Pictures. So these are subfolders within the main My Documents folder. And you can see my videos and my ebooks and so on. Now, you won't see a lot of these by default, so you don't need to worry about them. Generally, you wouldn't have them, and generally, you just have my documents folder, and then you would start storing your document files here. Now, let's close that. Left click at the X. Back to Start menu. My pictures is the same concept. It's a folder to store your pictures. Left click and it opens it up, and you can store your pictures there by default. Again, I'm not going to go into too much detail at this time. This will be coming later. But things may look a little different for you, and as I've already mentioned, Windows XP is very customizable. This is a folder. What you're viewing here is a folder, and you have different folder views. One of them is icons. So you can see that it's the same thing, but it looks quite a bit different. So you do need to bear that in mind. Things can look quite a bit different depending upon the viewing options you select. Let's close that. OK, Start Menu, My Music, and My Computer, pretty self-explanatory. My Computer really gives you an overview of your computer so you can navigate your way around and easily find your way to where you want to go. So let's take a quick look there. OK, it opens up what looks like a folder, but it breaks it down into files stored on this computer, hard disk drives, devices with removable storage, and other. So really, I would say you want to get quite comfortable with your computer and navigating around your computer before you really start getting involved with this area. 
So let's close it. We really don't need to worry about that for now. And finally, Start Menu, Control Panel. This is another somewhat advanced option. If we quickly bring it up, for the Control Panel, the name says it all. It's an area of Windows that allows you to make a lot of changes to your computer and control a lot of elements of Windows XP. Taking a quick look through, there's Accessibility, Add Hardware, Add or Remove Programs, Administrative Tools, and some of these really do get quite advanced. Folder Options, Fonts, Game Controllers, Network Connections, and so on. So that's a very quick introduction to the Control Panel. Let's close that and go back to the Start menu. Set Program Access and Defaults. And if we take a quick look, here, as its name says, you can customize or select where programs are accessible from and so on. We won't go into that now, but that's just how it looks. Back to the Start menu, and lastly, you can search for files or folders. I won't cover that now, or you can run specific programs, and again, I won't cover that at this point. Help and Support. This is quite straightforward. If I just open that up, it opens up the Windows XP Help and Support Center. Here, for example, you can go by Topics, What's New in Windows XP, Windows Basics, and here it just has a lot of documentation. If you're searching for something, you could enter, for example, how do I close a folder? Let's see what it brings back for that request. So left click on that, and OK, it's done a search, and it feels, based on what it thinks are most relevant to these terms, the glossary, and what's new in Windows XP Service Pack 2. OK, but very basically, you could say that this is instantly accessible documentation about Windows XP, so you may want to have a look at the Help and Support Center. Sometimes, if you have questions, it might be wise to look in here quickly, first of all, and if something isn't working, it may be worth taking a quick look, or a quick troubleshoot, as it's called, to try to identify and fix the problem. Let's close that. So that's a quick introduction to the Start menu. As you can see, there's some duplication here with the Quick Start icons. Everything in the Quick Start icons can be accessed through the All Programs, or the shortcuts here, assuming the right shortcuts appear, and the Display Options, many of which I've covered in previous videos, are accessible through the Control Panel. Anyway, that's a quick introduction to getting started using the Start menu of Windows XP.